Hopefully you can hear me. This is new for us. We're working from our home. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to have a short webinar today. Uh, it is on where do I publish? And uh, let's get started. So, just to let you know, the WRHA Virtual Library has uh, been working full uh, force throughout this uh, new normal, as they call it, with the COVID-19 virus. Um, we are still available to all WRHA staff, eligible community health agencies, eligible personal care homes. Uh, we, you can still have access to all of our electronic resources. Uh, you can still reach out to us to do literature searches. Document delivery is limited at this time to uh, anything that we can get uh, scanned or such as a journal article as usual or chapters out of books. We're no longer able to uh, get physical books at the moment. And we're still doing our education and training ses sessions such as this one. And we have our current awareness program as well, still up and running. So uh, I forgot to mention that this uh, is going to be recorded and will be available to you at a later date. So if any of your colleagues are interested, you can refer them to that. We'll have it posted to our website. And we will send out a copy of the slide deck as well to you. Uh, after the presentation is completed and, and posted to our website, which usually takes a couple of days. So the reason we're here today is uh, throughout my time, I've had various scenarios, uh, situations happen, such as these ones that I have up in front of you. Uh, they might be something that you've encountered as well. Uh, you know, where perhaps you've, working in your unit, you've developed a new treatment for something like bed sores and you want to let others know about it. Or maybe you've developed a, a novel training program for healthcare aides uh, who work with residents with dementia that has significantly improved patient care. And you also want to share that information. Or maybe you've completed the executive training program and want to share the results of your project since you've improved wait times. In all of those cases, you and your team are, have decided to write a paper and you need to decide where to publish. So the aim of this talk is, as I said, going to be brief because really it's a process. And I'm just going to highlight some questions that you need to think about that will help you determine where to publish and demonstrate a few journal finder tools that will help you with that. So one thing is that it does take quite a bit of time, uh, quite a bit of thinking about. So the earlier that you do this in the writing paper, in the writing process, the better it is. Uh, by deciding early on in, in the process of writing the paper, we'll ensure that you're following the guidelines and submission requirements of, this, of the journal that you perhaps decide to uh, publish in. So there really are only two big steps that you need to take. Uh, one is deciding what your needs or criteria are. And the other is what are the publishers or the journals criteria. Those two need to align in order to ensure that your man manuscript is accepted. Getting published can take anywhere from two to eight months. And you'll want to make sure that you avoid any extra delays. Um, throughout that process by not doing your homework and perhaps selecting several publishers who turn you down. So what are some of the questions that you need to think about? What are your needs? You have to think about why do you want to publish? Is it because you're going for a promotion? Uh, because you received a grant and you're required to publish? or you just simply want to share the knowledge with your colleagues. What is the purpose of your paper? Is it an opinion piece? Uh, do you have a new approach to patient care or, or a health problem? Is it clinical research? If, for example, your research is based on only seven patients, you're gonna want to make sure that the journal uh, that you want to publish in 
doesn't require or only accept clinical research of 300 plus patients. What about the reputation? Does that matter of the journal matter to you? That may influence whether you pick a journal that has a high impact factor, uh, i.e. that's one that's highly read and cited or not. Or possibly you just need to pick a peer reviewed journal. Audience, do you need a subject specific journal? Maybe pediatric nursing? Or will a multidisciplinary one work for you, such as nursing? You might need to think about your audience. Is it international, national? Uh, you might, for a national uh, journal, you might pick something like Canadian Journal of Diabetic Practice and Research. Or maybe you just want a regional reach, so you might pick a local association's publication to submit to. Is open access a requirement? If your research was funded by a grant, are you required to comply with making your research freely available? You'll need to check that the journal uh, that you pick will allow you to do that and find out what the fees apply and possibly any restrictions. How time sensitive is your research? Have you found the cure to COVID-19? Do you really want to go through a peer review process? How long does that take? Of course, peer review process gives your research um, teeth, so you probably do want to go through that, but this will impact when your research is made available. Is the data time sensitive? Is it required for a promotion deadline? These are things that you need to think about. And what type of research or study are you publishing? Are you writing a research report, a review, a quality improvement report, clinical practice articles, or perhaps you're just writing a brief research note or a case report? You'll want to make sure that the journal you look at accepts that type of article. So for example, nursing research. You can find this easily online. I've uh, just searched uh, on the web, found the Nursing Research Journal, and went to a section called Information for Authors, and here it clearly outlines the various types of articles that it will accept. So you'll need to make sure that it matches that. So having thought through some of those questions, a quick way to find a suitable journal, and it probably works for many of you, is what are you reading? What, you know, how do you keep up to date? What are the journals that uh, feed you with information? Or another one would be where are your colleagues publishing? Perhaps you have a reference list or a bibliography that you created while writing your article. So where are those cited? Or where are those being published? The ones that you've cited, where are those being published? You could also just take your topic and search in various databases like PubMed or CINAHL and find out that way what are the titles of the journals that are being have similar publications, articles in them. This way, at a minimum, you are hopefully matching your paper by topic and audience, and you can start building a list of potential journals. But sometimes you need to go a little deeper. Perhaps your team wants you to look further for journals that are only peer reviewed. Perhaps you are going for that promotion and need to publish in a high ranking journal. How are you going to match all of your requirements to the hundreds, possibly thousands of journals in any given field? Fortunately, there are journal finder tools that can help you with this process. Uh, these are only a few of them. Uh, some are created by publishers, such as the first three on the list there. So you need to realize that they are for fee agencies and will highlight their journals only. And others are created by other organizations, such as the two I've listed at the bottom there. For most of these, all of these, you simply uh, provide article keywords or abstracts, the title of your article, 
and the journal finder tool will identify a list of potential journal titles that match. Some include more information than others. Some include journal metrics, so you can narrow search to highly ranked journals. If it's not included, if information that you're looking for is not included in any of these, please remember to contact one of us, one of the librarians, and we can check further for you. We have access to several tools such as Ulrich's, Scopus, and the journal citation reports that will help identify information that's missing from any, any of these or from any of the web pages. first one on the list is Elsevier Journal Finder. So if you go to the URL that I've provided for you, this is what will appear. And I've entered in a title and an abstract of an existing paper. You can also enter in keywords and limit by field of research. So for instance, under field of research, there is a health section and you can select under that medicine and nursing. You can also refine your search further uh, by publication type, whether it's uh, open access or whether it's subscription. You can uh, limit it by journal impact factor if that's important to you. And this one also includes a review and publication time, as well as the average time uh, to publish. So if you put in just this basic information, the next page that you get looks like this. So here you can see uh, the gold box is open access, whether it's subscription, it's given me a test, test match score. So the first one matches, first two actually match the best, but the third one there is perhaps one that I'm interested in. Uh, it doesn't have a bad test match score. Uh, it gives me the site score and the impact factor of the journal as well as I might want to take into consideration that uh, the publisher accepts acceptance rate is only 17%. And it does give the time to the first decision. So from the time that you first put in for your submission to publish with this journal, it will take three weeks generally to get your decision. And then you're gonna go through a process probably with the editors of making revisions. So really, uh, that could take any length of time. Uh, and then the time to publication, once they're happy with it, could take up to another four weeks. The other ones pretty well look much the same. This is Springer Nature. Again, you can add the title and abstract in there. Uh, this covers Springer titles as well as BMC journals. So about 2,500 journals is covered by this uh, journal suggester. And again, you can refine your recommendations by impact factor, acceptance rate, maximum time to first decision. Uh, one thing that's added in this one I like as a librarian is you can check to see indexing services as to which uh, database that uh, the journal will be indexed in. You can view all, all of them, or you can limit uh, the titles to just open access titles or subscription journals. So this would look like this when you get it. Uh, very basic information, but if you click on the journal image, that's where you can get information on where it's indexed, the aim and scope of the journal, the publication charges. Uh, it'll give you a link to the journal homepage, and also you can start, it has a submit your manuscript button, so you can start the process right away if you're ready to do that. So this is getting a little repetitive, but this is Wiley, similar idea. Uh, just the title and, and manuscript information is put in there. Uh, Wiley covers a broad range of subjects. It includes medicine, nursing, dentistry, healthcare, and psychology, about 1,600 plus records. And theirs looks something like this. Uh, the image uh, didn't load for the various journals, titles, but the, the little mountain-like image there, you click on that and you get to the journal's web page, website. So you can look at information about it, the aims and submission requirements. Uh, you can also look at recent articles to see if it kind of matches the style of what you're doing. 
You can limit your search as well to open access journals. And as with the other ones, you can see the journal impact factor, factor and ranking field. And again, as well, it has a nice submit to this journal. So if you're ready to submit, you can do that as well from this page. Another one, which is only available to you if you subscribe to it, is EndNote, and you can get that through EndNote directly or through Web of Science. Uh, in EndNote, on the EndNote website, you would click on the Match tab at the top there, and you would be able to enter the title and abstract of uh, your article. And what's nice is if you are using EndNote, it will, you can associate the, your references with uh, this information as well, so that it will take not just the title and abstracts, but all of your references into account to come up with a good match. And this is what it looks like. So it'll give you a list of best fit journal titles, and it's pulling this information from Web of Science core collection, as well as journal citation reports. The indexes, you know, you can see the information is very similar as the other ones. Uh, it tells you basically how good a match you have, how by the strength of the blue bar there. Uh, gives you the impact factors, and again, you have the ability to start the submission process right from this page. One I like is Jane. Um, here you just enter the title or abstract. You can actually scramble the text if you're concerned about confidentiality, which sometimes people are. Uh, and you can also use keyword searches. This is pulls its information from PubMed, uh, and it's just the current 10 years. So it'll find the best match on journals, authors, or articles. And this is what it looks like. I've opened up the first title there, which is International Psychogeriatrics. Uh, it gives you a confidence score, um, again, as to how well it matches. You can take a look at the article to see if it, if it matches your, your paper in style and format. Um, one thing I'd like to say is your best strategy is to use several of these finder tools to come up with a short list of possible titles, mostly because several of them are uh, for fee-based. So it's good to use a variety of these. From at this point, you've might you've come up with a, a decent list of journals that you could possibly submit to, uh, but that doesn't mean you're automatically accepted. You're still gonna to have to do your homework further and go to the journal website and check out the author guidelines or submission guidelines. Uh, as I said, you can find most of this on the journal website. Uh, if you have a print issues, a lot of this information is generally available in there as well. Some of the information you may need to contact the publisher, example, for example, the length of time for peer review and the journal's acceptance rates. And some of the information we as librarians can attain using databases, as I mentioned before, such as all Rips or Scopus or Web of Science. Uh, one thing I like about this is it's very important to consider what database the journal is indexed. Uh, that's something that we as librarians can help you find out because it's going to be very important that your paper is discoverable. You're going to want to make sure that it shows up in a in a database like PubMed or CINAHL or Scopus or Web of Science so that your colleagues can find the information. So, if you've done your homework, and your criteria match the journal's criteria, that will greatly increase your success rate for being accepted for publication. So congratulations on that. I would like to mention that you can write to several publishers in advance asking if they would be interested in publishing your topic. That could save you some time but it's proper etiquette to only submit your publication to one journal at a time. So that makes it really important to do your homework. You don't wanna waste that time in submitting to 
two, three or more uh, publishers and being turned down, that'll really delay the whole process. So congratulations if you've done your homework, as I said, hopefully you'll have success on the first time around. I would like to mention though, once you have published, that you should be aware you will receive solicitations by email generally, inviting you to publish in other journals or conferences. And I'd like you to be aware that we do have an up and coming webinar, Escaping the Jaws of Predatory Publishers, due April 29th. I didn't talk about that much in this session because we will be having this full webinar on it, but this will be very important that you are aware of how to avoid those publishers that are not that reputable and avoid paying money and publishing in a journal that uh, may impact the quality of your research. So that's the end of our webinar today. We have our contact information there. If you'd like to contact me directly, feel free to do so. As I said, the library is open, running full force, so our contact information is there. If you're online, you can use Ask Us to reach us. And lastly, I'd like to point out, if you want to keep up to date with what resources the library's brought in for you, what we've created for you, or what new webinars we have for you, we do have a newsletter I would encourage you to sign up for. Are there any questions? You can enter it into the chat box. Um, feel free to contact me after the webinar. I'll stay on the line for a couple of minutes. Uh, if you're in the process of typing something in, I'll still be here, but at this point, I'll say goodbye. Have a great day and hope everyone stays healthy and well.